What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Uh, Patrick Andres has written this book about dream symbols. So we're going to be talking about your dreams. And everybody has the dream of being naked in public. But that's a perfect title. <laughs> so we have a wonderful cover guy, and he came up with this anyway. And I think it's okay. The bookstores have accepted it. I told him last night, the bookstores have to like your cover or they will not take your book. A lot of authors don't know that. And they said, okay, we'll go with it and see. <laughs> so, well, Patrick, we have, his wife will be speaking tomorrow, Catherine. She's written two books now with us. Mm -hmm. Now you're, go, you're one of our authors. <laughs> So he's going to be speaking about dreams. So if you've got a dream you want interpreted, he's going to be doing that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, Patrick Andres. And first you're going to do something with Arma. Right. right. Okay. Oh. You've got your mic on there. Right, yeah, I just so need to put this one back down here, yeah. All right, so we're going to do something a little bit different. And uh, so, Armand, if you would mind joining me. All right, so just sit back for a moment as we begin. And welcome to the world of your dreams.
Thank you. So the reason why we began with that is because the language of dreams is different than the language that we normally use during the day. And really, the language of dreams is based on the first language that our minds ever used. So in a lot of ways, dreams are a very mystical experience. So the language of dreams is what we often call the language of the mind. So to give you just a little bit of an, an example of this, just pay attention to what's in your mind right now as you read that word. You can even close your eyes for just a moment and see what kind of an image comes to your mind. All right, now open your eyes and tell me if this is what you saw. So it might be easy to say that every one of us probably had a little bit of a different image of that word. So this is just a, a short demonstration of really the inherent weakness in physical language, in words. Because every word that we use was originally based on an actual image. And when we're talking about an image, we're not just talking about the picture up here. This makes it seem very two-dimensional. But we have to think back to our human experience. So our human experience is not just what we see, it's what we hear, it's what we feel. It's also what we smell and taste. But it's not even those physical things, it's also emotionally what we feel inside. All of those things play a part in our experiences, and all of those things play a part in our dreams. So take a look at this, and tell me if you know what that is without me saying the word. So is it really true that a picture is worth a thousand words? Even though this is a very two-dimensional experience for us, because you know, I, maybe I could have gotten a ball and just tossed it around, but that might have been a little distracting. <laughs> but then you, you could feel it, you could taste it if you wanted to. So there's all of these very rich experiences that we have, and this is really what our dreams are reflecting. The dreams aren't reflecting something that's just two-dimensional. It's really reflecting our human experience. And that's why when we talk about the language of the mind, we talk about dreams in terms of universal symbols. And I know there's a lot of debate about the meaning of dreams and things like that, but we've been teaching dream interpretation for over 20 years, and one of the things that we do find to be true is that we each have more commonalities than differences. So when we take into consideration that no matter where you are in the world, that you have certain human experiences that are common with all of our neighbors all over the planet, you want to be healthy, you want good things for your children, you want to feel successful in your life, whatever success means to you. All of those things are part of our human experience, and all of those things are universal. So the cultural differences, when we look in those larger contexts, really take on a, a much smaller context. And we do consider those things, the cultural differences and also the personal differences, but those really become secondary to the universal symbols. So when we look at our experiences, our dreams come from an inner part of ourselves. And that's why we describe it as a mystical experience, because it's really a doorway to a much larger realm of our experience than what we experience during the day. Now, our attention is usually focused in the physical world and all the things that we're doing, because that's where we spend two-thirds of our day. And if you're getting the amount of sleep that's usually recommended to stay healthy, which I know sometimes I fail to do that. I don't know if anyone else does in here. But just in case you didn't know, it's recommended that you have eight hours of sleep every day. Now, if you do the math, that's a full one-third of your day. So that may not seem like a lot because you're unconscious mostly during that time. You just kind of like go to sleep and then it seems like you cease to exist a little bit, and then you just wake up again. But when you do the math, by the time you're 60 years old, do you realize that you will have slept for 20 years? 20 years of your life. And when I started looking at that when I was in college, I thought, wow, either that's a real waste of my time, or maybe there's something more important going on there than I knew of before. 
So the first thing that I started looking at was actually ways to um, start sleeping less, <laughs> looking at ways to be able to you know, cut that down to about six hours or maybe four hours a night or something like that. And so I thought I could, wow, I could get 10 more years of good productive effort into my life that way. But then what I realized as I started studying about sleep and then that led into the study of dreams is that I found that dreams are actually very significant to our life and to everything that's going on within us. When we start paying attention to that language that's being communicated to us, that there's a lot of richness that we can get out of that. So the language of dreams is really talking about more the function of the things that show up in the dreams because since this is an internal experience, and as I mentioned, it's a mystical experience. And the reason why I say that is because dreams really come from the realm of the mind that we usually refer to as the subconscious mind. But another term for that is soul. And so the term soul, you know, has been used a lot of different ways, but the way that I like to use it is referring to that part of ourselves that has existed before we came into this life and the part of us that will continue to exist after we leave this life. Now, I recognize there is some debate out there about whether we come back again and again. I know in this crowd, probably, it's just understood we're going to come back again and again. <laughs> But usually I do put that little disclaimer in there just in case because, you know, some people do consider this is the one-shot deal, but most people have a belief in some kind of a religion, and most of those religions do have an acknowledgement that we existed before this lifetime and that we will go on to something else after this lifetime. And so that's really the realm that dreams are coming from. It's a much deeper, richer place because of its longevity. It's an eternal part of ourselves. And so to your subconscious mind, the context looks a lot different than to our physical personality. Because this personality that we are, this Patrick lifetime that I'm having, is temporary. And all the other times that I've been here, I've been somebody else. I haven't been this same personality. I didn't have the same name. I wasn't in the same country. You know, I've lived all kinds of different places. I was all kinds of different people. Female as well as male. You know, so the gender differences really kind of disappear when we look in the context of the soul. And all those other differences start to disappear too. So when we look at dreams and we start to examine a dream from that perspective, of the soul, many things look very different to us. And so we can start to understand what our inner self is really communicating to us about our life. So usually the rule of thumb that we recommend to hold in mind is that the symbols in dreams relate to the function of what you're seeing and not to the actual symbol. So just as a quick example, uh, the physical body in a dream would be represented by any vehicle, usually like a car could represent the physical body as well as your body in the dream. Because to the soul, this is just a vehicle for your consciousness to get you from one place to the other. And that someday, hopefully a long time from now, when it wears out, you just trade it in for a new one. So how much have you really mourned the loss of any car that you've traded in for a new one? Usually that's a very happy occasion. We're like, yay, a brand new car. So it's kind of exciting to go pick it out and everything. But really between lifetimes, that it, we do have that excitement. We're all gearing up for that new experience, trying something different. And once we shed the body, we're not really mourning it anymore. It's just that physical personality that mourns the transition because it ceases to exist, that little part of ourselves but in a way, that's no different than, you know, when you're a college student and you graduate and then you transition into a whole new part of your life. That's a kind of a loss, too, even though it's a victory. So that's the context of the soul. So I have some little introductions from some cute little friends of mine here. Let me see if we can... What are dreams? All right, so let's talk a little bit about what dreams are. 
So first of all, we talked about dreams being a mystical experience. And so dreams um, reveal the inner world of our consciousness. And so when we're talking about the inner mind, um, we're talking about uh, getting feedback. So the, um, when we look at the dreams, it's, it's like a communication that we have with the conscious and the subconscious mind. So the way that we're communicating to our subconscious mind throughout the day is with our conscious thoughts. So every thought that you have leads to feelings, it leads to other thoughts, it leads to actions. And so that's how we're communicating to the subconscious mind. But the feedback then that we get from the subconscious mind is through our dreams. So the dreams are actually communicating to us how we're responding to those certain situations. Now, one thing I just wanted to, to share at this point is because dreams, one of the reasons why uh, we have the naked lady on the front and shows that title is it has a little bit of a double meaning. Because in a dream, when you're naked, it actually represents honesty. I mean, if you think about it, if you're standing there naked, there's really nothing to hide, right? <laughs> in a dream, your clothes that you choose out, you, you choose to pick out in the morning and wear if you observe what's going on when you're standing there in front of your closet. There's this process that's going on. You pull something out. No, I don't really feel we're wearing blue today. I don't really feel like blue today. And then you see this green something, and you're like, yeah, I really feel like wearing green today. Green feels right. So there's this kind of interaction that we have with the clothes that we wear. And so they're expressing who we are and, and how we feel that day and maybe how our energy is. And if you can read energy and if you can see auras, you might find that sometimes uh, people pick out clothes that sort of resonate with their aura and how their aura is expressing that day. So that's creating this feedback loop that we're experiencing. So we kind of like that, that double meaning that um, not only are the dreams reflecting um, that honesty within you, but it also, by interpreting your dreams, you start to become honest with yourself. Because your dreams will always tell you the truth. Now, you may not interpret it honestly. <laughs> You do have that option. You can, you can look at the inter interpretation and then say, no, they couldn't mean that. No, 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 that can't be me. But your dreams will always tell you the truth. So that's one reason why we say dream interpretation is very important. Because when you have that feedback, thank you. Let's give him a hand, please. Thank you, we appreciate that. I know he was trying to be inconspicuous, and so I just brought, <laughs> brought the attention right there. But um, when you look at your dreams, it will give you that honest feedback that we need in our lives sometimes to get us on course. And so am I okay to try this next one, or should we just skip these segments? All right, here, I got the go-ahead, so let's... He's coming back. <laughs> it's all right if we need to skip them. Why should I interpret dreams? Oh, so go over to the presentation. Great. All right. <laughs> All right, so we talked about um, how long we sleep, and so we're going to talk just a little bit about the process of dreaming. 
because out of that 20 years of sleep time, you're not actually dreaming for that whole time. So we know some things from science about dreaming, and also a lot of these things that, that I'm talking about tonight are not only what science talks about, because we're also talking about the realm of consciousness, which science is starting to catch up to consciousness and what that really means, but isn't completely there yet. But out of that eight hours that we sleep every night, we go into these sleep cycles. And so each sleep cycle typically is about 90 minutes long, although as you sleep, throughout the night, they can get just a little bit longer. And then at the end of a 90-minute cycle of sleep, then we go into this dream time. So how dreams were first discovered was through what was called rapid eye movement, is that they were observing people as they were sleeping, and they noticed that there was a period of time during the sleep that their eyes were darting around inside their eyelids. And so they found that when they would wake people up during that time, that they would most often remember their dreams during those periods. And so they started to say, well, REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep is, is where dreams occur. And then when they would wake people up in between during a deep sleep, they would only remember a dream maybe one out of 10 times, but much less frequently. So that's where the sleep research began in terms of where dreams happen. So metaphysically speaking, though, what we're looking at is that we take our consciousness away from our physical life. And so if you think about when you're asleep, how often do you really think about, oh, I have to pay the bills, or did I water the dog before I went to sleep? Or, you know, it's like um, all these things just kind of drop away. You know, we don't, we don't think about things going on in our life very often. Every once in a while you'll have that come up in your dreams, but that's not very common. So we go into this whole new realm and we call that unconsciousness because we're no longer aware of what's going on in our life. And so during that time, we're communing with the subconscious mind. And so we're getting feedback in terms of um, how we are progressing on creations that we have going on because the subconscious mind is the realm of visualization. So when we create an image in our mind of something we want to create in our lives, it's like a seed that's being planted in the ground and your subconscious mind is fertile soil for that seed idea, so it starts to grow and develop, and so your dreams sometimes can reflect the progress that you're making. And so uh, as you interpret your dreams, then you can start to see that unfolding in your life. And another thing that comes up very frequently is health dreams, too. Because fortunately, I know for me, I'm glad that I don't have to think about my immune system and handling all of those little things that are going on. I don't have to worry about my digestive system and consciously controlling all of that. Our bodies are run mostly by our subconscious mind. All of those little details we don't really give very much attention to. So that's all taken care of in that realm, but when you go into that sleep time and you go into the subconscious realm, your subconscious mind knows things are brewing in your body before you do. So long before you experience the symptoms of a fever or feeling that little off feeling where you know something isn't quite right, your subconscious mind already has your immune system kicking into high gear and it's sending out the forces trying to take care of whatever's going on. Or it's giving you feedback, letting you know you're pushing yourself too hard. It's time to slow down. You need to relax a little bit because the organs are giving us feedback that they're getting a little fatigued and things are going to start to happen that you're not going to like if you keep pushing yourself like this. So those health dreams are important to listen to also. So as we start looking at our dreams then, um, the first thing that we are going to want to do is to be able to uh, start remembering them. Now, this is something that we've had a lot of people come through over the years that say, well, I don't remember my dreams. And I've had some students that have been quite insistent upon that. Oh, I just don't dream. So the first thing is I reassure them, yes, everybody dreams. <laughs> That's been shown scientifically. Everybody is dreaming every night. You may not remember them, but everybody is dreaming. But just like with everything else in your mind, what you give attention to grows. 
So when your dreams um, aren't coming to you, if you just start giving them some attention, then you can uh, start to recall them pretty easily. Let's see. Oh, hooray. All right, so once we start remembering our dreams then, then we want to start being able to record them. So you don't have to do anything fancy. I know I've seen dream journals that are upwards of $40, and they're very pretty, but you don't really need that if you don't want to invest in something like that. Just a spiral notebook will work. But the important thing is not so much what you're writing in as it is keeping it right there by your bed. Because what we have found is that it's very important to be able to write your dream down first thing in the morning when you wake up. Because if you get up and you start your morning routine and then you, uh, you know, get into other things, a dream is like an echo. And so the echo fades very quickly. So if you don't get the dream right then, even just 15 minutes later, and you may find that you don't remember anything in your dream, or maybe just very few uh, details of that. So when you get that written down, usually we recommend keeping a little bit of space on the side so that you can start to translate your symbols. And the symbols are going to be anything that is usually a noun to start with. So for example, if you're dreaming that you're driving down the street in your car, so your car would be an example of a symbol. And then if you have lunch with your sister or your brother, they would be a person in your life, so a person would be another symbol. And the actions in a dream will be related to what's going on in the dream. So those aren't as important to look at right away, but mostly what you're gonna start with is those individual symbols. So you're gonna have that little space next to your dream as you write it down. And then you're gonna to want to underline each one of your symbols so that you can um, understand what's going on. And then as you get those symbols put together, what you're gonna do is start putting it together in a new way. So, one thing that you can do, though, if you're still having trouble remembering your dreams after you've gotten your dream notebook, you have your pencil by your bed, you have everything set up, is you can do affirmations as you're going to sleep to help prime your mind. So again, it's keeping in mind that your mind is a creative device. And it's important to understand that we are not our minds. Our mind is a tool and in many ways a vehicle just like the physical body. But if we learn how to use the mind properly, then we can put it to the proper use in our lives so that we can accomplish the things that we want to do. We can cause that personal growth that we're all seeking. We can accomplish, uh, you know, that inner journey of reconnection to spirit. All of those things are driven by the mind in some ways. Even though a lot of the teachings say, well, you have to let go of the mind to be able to connect with the source. And there is truth to that. Although, what I would always say too is, to be able to do that though, you need to create that thought of what you're doing because everything in our lives begins with a thought. So when you create that idea, then you start moving forward. So if we create an affirmation such as, I will remember my, remember my dream, it doesn't have to be something complicated, just keep it simple. And then not only tell yourself that you're going to remember it, but look at your dream notebook and see yourself waking up in the morning, writing it down first thing. And you can even open up your dream notebook and sometimes I would even write it right at the top, first thing. This is my dream tomorrow morning. And so through those key suggestions, what we found is that very quickly, within just a week or even two weeks, 
People can go from remembering maybe one dream every month or every two months to being able to remember at least one dream a week, and then they start getting up to two or three dreams a week, and then four dreams a week. Now, I do want to give just a little bit of advice here, because I've talked to several people about this, and I went through the same experience myself. If you're new to recording your dreams and writing them down, you may get to a point where you get really good at recalling all the little details of the dream. And so you're writing the dream down, and maybe you get to a point where each dream is about two or three pages long. So I realize that in most people's practical life, that is not something that you can take the time to write a two or three page dream every single morning. You start kind of thinking, well, this is taking me a very long time. So when you get good at that, that's really the time to start learning how to record your dreams in shorthand. Because as you start to learn how to interpret your dreams, the idea is that you're going to look at those key symbols, you'll start to learn how to recognize those themes in your dream, and then you'll be able to um, write down the key symbols that you need without all that exhaustive detail. Now, I was just talking to somebody actually on an uh, a internet radio show, and he was saying, well, isn't all that detail really important? You know, that the, the waiter comes up to you, and he's wearing this red shirt, and you know, he had black shoes on, and I remember all that. Isn't all that important? Well, there is truth that all of that has significance, but what I have found is that as long as you're hitting the main themes, you're really getting the essence of the dream that you need. And so, if you have the time, it is interesting to look at those aspects, like you could start looking at the red shirt and say, well, red has to do with, you know, emotional energy, aggressive energy. And so, in, in some ways, you know, the color of the clothing, you could um, relate to the energy of the aura and things like that. But what I would really recommend focusing on, especially in the beginning, is the fact that you're in a restaurant in the first place. Because when we're talking about dreams and we're taking in food, food represents information that we're taking in and we're making it a part of ourselves. And we, what we call that in our lives is learning. We're learning something new. We're taking in knowledge. And when we take in information and we learn it and we make it a part of our life and it becomes part of who we are, that is knowledge. That's really the essence of knowledge. So in our dreams, when we're taking in food, the food becomes part of our physical body. And that's one reason why our subconscious mind uses that image as a representation of, of the function, which is coming from the context of the mind. So again, we're going to go back to just to, to remind ourselves how we're looking at these symbols, everything is coming from the perspective of the mind, and more than that, from the perspective of the soul. And your soul doesn't have a physical body. Your conscious mind has a phys physical body. And your soul knows that it is eternal. At that level of our consciousness, we know that we are eternal beings. So when we look at some of these things in dreams, they take on a whole new meaning because our conscious mind is thinking, oh, well, I had this terrible car crash last night. That's horrible. I had a horrible dream. But to your soul, even if someone dies in the dream, that's just seen as a change that's happening in your life. Just like if you lose a job, in a way, that's a death because part of you is dying in your life and you're moving on to something else. So change isn't seen as this horrible thing. It's just part of the natural transition that's occurring in life. So a lot of times death images show up, or uh, in the example I gave earlier of the car representing the physical body and the health dreams can show up. A car crash would be a, an example of a health dream. So the road that we're driving down is our path in life, and if you lose control and crash, and your car is crashed, that's giving you some forewarning, saying, pay attention to how hard you're pushing yourself, pay attention to what you're doing in your life, because you're putting your physical health in jeopardy here. And also, being the path of life, something else to look at in that context is 
You know, is it something where we're getting off track? Where there's somewhere we are intending to go and we're allowing things to distract us and pull us off course. So that's another aspect of that that we can look at. So let's look at some scenarios. I want to go over some dream scenarios first to kind of give us a little bit of a, of a background. Before we get into doing some dreams, I'd like to give you the opportunity to have some dreams interpreted. I do ask, though, uh, to keep them concise so that we can get to several people. But the um, first thing I want to talk about is um, some common dream scenarios that we might have. Like, for example, I talked about the restaurant. So anything with food in it, food is a common scenario. And so that's going to represent learning. But the other place where we might experience learning is in a school. So a lot of times we'll have school dreams. Now, the school dreams can be interesting because sometimes we'll have a dream where we go back to sort of what we might consider an inappropriate grade level, where you have a dream about being in high school again or something like that when we've moved past that quite some time ago. And that isn't something that I would say you know, is a bad dream, but it could be that you're kind of going back to an old way of being, an old way of learning. So those are just things to look at to see, is it still relevant to what I'm doing in my life now? And usually I would recommend that if it's a college dream as an adult, really college is, is where we are. Once we've graduated high school, we're ready for college. And college is appropriate at any age level. In fact, I just went back not too long ago to get some more hours to get a degree in science. And people go back in their 50s and 60s, even 70s, to add to their degrees or education. So anytime that you're dreaming about college, <clears throat> that I would describe as an, as an age level that's appropriate for where we are in our life. But the other thing that we can look at with school dreams and learning in general is that we're not just looking at our physical life, we're also looking at our soul's growth. So a lot of times when time is passing in a dream, it indicates where we are or where we feel like we are in our soul growth or evolution. So if we're late, for example, which is a common dream, you're late for class, or you're wandering through the building and you can't find your class. So that would be an example of a dream where you feel like you should be further along in your life than you are, or you feel like you should be further along in your spiritual growth or evolution than you are, or you know there's something else, some kind of piece that's missing, but you're not sure where to go to get that. So that's some common scenarios with the school dream. Now, the um, work would be similar to that, except work is where we um, accomplish our goals. You know, that's where we earn our living, so we place value there. Money, we're going to uh, talk about again, represents value. So when we're working and we have those kinds of themes, that's where we're accomplishing things in our life. Because if you think about it, whatever you do for your work, we strive to be productive. We're producing something in our life, and then hopefully whatever we're creating in our life, we're receiving some kind of, some kind of value. And uh, physically, of course, that's monetary. But internally, there's a lot more to it than that, we know. All right, so let's look at some common dream symbols here, too, and then we might be able to go through a couple more scenarios and then get to some actual dreams. So animals is a, is a common symbol. And so animals represent habits. And the reason why is because animals have memory, they learn, and they have attention. So our cat, for example, we have uh, one place that we put her food down. So whenever she's hungry, she goes to that same place every time. Even if the bowls aren't there, she knows where her food bowls go. So they have memory, they learn. And that's useful because, you know, it, it was important for survival, to know where the water is, to know where dangerous situations are. And animals also have attention. 
But animals don't have imagination. They don't project their consciousness into the future, and they don't make plans for the future. They respond to what is right now. And that's where our consciousness was at one point in our evolution. But now we've developed the ability to project our consciousness into the future and to create an image of what we want to create. But whenever we forget that we can create our life or we can make changes, then we revert back to this animal experience. If you think about something like tying your shoes, well, that's a habit that's very productive because, I mean, who wants to have to learn how to tie your shoes every morning? We'd never get dressed and out the door. <laughs> so those kinds of habits really help our life become more efficient. But if we had an embarrassing experience, say, when we were in junior high school, and maybe we were publicly embarrassed, and then from that point forward, we were afraid to go out and, and do social things. And so we became kind of a, a recluse and started to kind of shy away from any kind of social interaction. And that was a habit that we developed. That's not one that's productive for us because we'd probably be happier if we could go out and we could do things that we wanted to do and, and not feel like we had to protect ourselves all the time. So the main thing with habits is just to identify, is this something that's really still serving me? If it is, that's fine. You can continue that in your life, but if it's something that isn't serving you anymore, then realize you can make a change. You can change any part of your personality that isn't working for you. Now, a car, as we talked about, is the physical body. And so, again, just as a reminder, the subconscious mind or soul looks at that as a vehicle. There's other things that could be seen as a vehicle, too, like a small airplane or uh, there could be larger vehicles like an ocean liner that wouldn't be the physical body. There's many people that are on that. So something that large uh, we would describe as an organization. And in a way, this gathering right here could be seen as a type of an organization or a vehicle because this conference is put together for a specific purpose. It's to bring us all together so that we can talk about things that lead to personal growth. That's really one of the underlying movements in this conference. So this conference is a vehicle. So some of you might have dreams of being on a ship or you might have dreams of being on a big commercial jetliner. And it's not just because many of you probably flew here. <laughs> Our subconscious mind will often draw on common or uh, not common, but recent experiences because it will get our attention and because it's relevant to what's going on in our life. So that's one of the, the common things that we find is that sometimes people will assume, oh, well, you know, yesterday I flew in here, so that's why I was dreaming about that, you know, big plane I was on. Well, that's not the only reason because there are probably a lot of people that flew here that didn't have dreams about flying on a commercial jetliner. So there's a reason, it's because you are connecting with this vehicle and your subconscious mind knows that this vehicle is, is moving you forward in your growth. There's a reason why we're all coming together. So that's a, a different example of a, of a vehicle. Now death, as we talked about, is change. Again, when we look at things in the context of the soul and we remind ourselves, all right, this is not coming from my conscious mind. My soul is not broken up over the death of my physical body. And I know that that is difficult to handle sometimes, especially when we lose a loved one or a beloved pet. It's hard because we have those attachments to our relationships. But that's one of the most liberating aspects of dream interpretation. And a lot of the different practices that you learn in the spiritual realm is that you can believe that we're eternal. But when we can actually have experiences where we know we're eternal, and it isn't just this intellectual knowledge, because the intellectual knowledge of it won't be comforting. It has to be something deeper where you know we're eternal. Then there is a peace in that. And yes, we still miss those relationships. 
But we think of them more like our friend who moved to California, and now we can't see each other anymore. All we can do is talk on the phone. Well, you know, when somebody passes on and they don't have a physical body, you use a different phone. But you can still talk. And that's actually one of the more interesting experiences that we find in dreams, is you can actually have visitation experiences where someone who has passed actually comes back to visit you. And what we find, those dreams are a little different. If they're talking to you just like I'm talking now, with their lips moving, and it is just like a physical life experience, they're probably a symbol that you're drawing on that image to represent a part of yourself. Because people represent aspects of our own personality in dreams. And you can usually identify that person in one or two words to help you understand what they represent. But if the person comes to you, and sometimes people describe them as just standing over the bed, that you kind of wake up and you're in, in the bed and there's this figure standing over you and they're just smiling and you recognize them, but they don't say anything. Or sometimes when they do talk, their lips aren't moving, but they're just telepathically communicating with you and you can just hear them and you know what their thoughts are. That would be described as a visitation experience. Because if you think about it, on the subconscious level, you don't have a physical body. So you're not talking the way we are here. It's, everything is telepathic there. And so a lot of times they'll have messages, you know, just saying, you know, relax, everything's fine, I'm doing great. But if you don't hear them, usually it's just because you aren't quite at that point in your consciousness where you're quite ready to interact on that level. Usually they are trying to tell you something, but you just can't hear it. And that's no problem if you have that experience. Don't feel bad about it. Just kind of work with the idea of coming to peace with that kind of an experience, and then they may come back and, and talk to you later on. So falling and flying, these are kind of interesting experiences. Falling in a dream usually is when your consciousness is returning back to your physical body. A lot of times, as our consciousness is, is descending through those levels of higher vibration, we have a, an experience of falling. And the other thing that's happening is that as our consciousness is coming back into the physical body, it's reactivating the nervous system, which gives us that kind of like falling sensation in our solar plexus. And so people are often scared that if they hit the ground, they're going to die. But what actually happens uh, is you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't have to worry about hitting the ground. Now, flying is a totally different experience, though. And I kind of combined these because I didn't really find a good image of, fl of people flying. It was all kinds of airplanes and stuff. So I need to find a good image of people flying. But flying in a dream is when consciously you're experiencing a lot of freedom in your life, a lot of freedom to create. And you recognize there aren't any limitations. So when you're in that mindset in your life, then you may have dreams where you're flying. And we teach lucid dreaming also, and that's more of an advanced skill. That isn't some, something that we teach right at the very beginning, because in my experience, I believe that it's important to really understand what your dreams are communicating to you before you start getting in there and changing them. But when you lucid dream, you can also start gaining that freedom. And if you think about it, you know, being able to wake up and be consciously aware in your dreams, there would be a very liberating sense of uh, freedom when you experience that. Now, fire is something that shows up, and that can be very scary in a dream. But fire is similar to, trans, uh, to change, which is death in a dream. It's transformation. So a lot of times when there's a lot of rapid expansion happening in our consciousness, we'll have fire dreams. The thing that we need to look at is, is the fire controlled or uncontrolled? It, it's very different to be sitting around a campfire with some friends as it is to have your house burned down in the dream. Now again, fire is still transformation. The house burning down would just mean that you feel like your consciousness is expanding and it's out of your control. So again, it's, it's not really uh, a bad dream. It's just letting you know, relax. You know, take some deep breaths. Center yourself. Just realize that this process is normal and natural and that everything's going to be okay. Food and dream, that looks pretty yummy. Again, we talked about that represents knowledge. So the food that we take in and the kind of food that we take in will indicate the kind of knowledge that we're taking in. So this may not exactly be considered nutritional by most people, but it is very yummy. 
So if you're eating something that is kind of more indulgent, you know, that's information and, and learning that you're doing that's just kind of fun and, you know, at least you consider it sort of frivolous. It doesn't mean that it is, that's just your perspective of it. But then if you're taking in something that's more wholesome and nutritious, that's something you consider more substantial, something that's really adding to you. Now, a house is where we exist during the day. We keep all of our possessions there. It's our big box. We keep all of our things in it. So, again, looking from the perspective of your soul, your house is going to represent your mind because, like I mentioned before, we are not our mind. Our mind is a vehicle that we have at our disposal to not just interact in the physical world, but we could also use it to create, and also um, we use the mind even beyond this lifetime. So your mind is, is something, or at least part of your mind, the conscious mind goes away each time, because the conscious mind is connected to the physical body, and it interacts directly with the brain. So when the brain dies, the conscious mind is gone. But all of those experiences that we've had are absorbed into the subconscious mind. Because, like I mentioned, we're having that continual feedback in both directions. So none of our experiences are lost. Nothing is lost. And in fact, we do Akashic Records readings where we can go back to past experiences and relate them to what you're doing your, now in your life and how that's relevant. You know, so all of that is there. It's, it's, it's a permanent record, a permanent memory. Nothing is lost. Even if we don't remember it right now in this conscious lifetime, there is a record there. And so the mind is really much more vast than oftentimes we give it credit for. We don't usually think about those broader aspects of the mind. Money is where we place our value. And again, every dream that we have is always from the perspective of the dreamer. So your dreams are always from your own perspective. So when we're talking about value, it's where you're placing your value, but it also represents self-value. So when we're talking about themes, if we look at a um, dream where uh, you're losing some money, you've lost your purse or something like that, then you feel like you're being taken from some, somewhere in your life. You're losing your value or your sense of value. So there's something that's, that's taking away your sense of value. And on the flip side, if you're gaining a lot of money, so there's some area where you're really expanding your sense of how valuable you really are. So look for those money dreams and how they show up. All right, naked. Again, we talked about that as being honesty. So we're revealing ourselves and we're um, being honest with ourselves, people, our aspects. So look at one or two words that describe each person in the dream. Oh, she's really honest, but she's kind of shy. Or, you know, he's very industrious, but can sometimes... Um, have a hot temper, you know. So those could reflect the different aspects of our personality. Think about the part of yourself that really likes music and maybe a part of yourself just wants to curl up in the room and be by yourself and just be quiet. Another part just loves to go out and do things with people. So we don't feel the same way all the time. You know, we have all these different personalities, aspects within us that come out at different times. So we're really very complex all right, toilet is a, is a tool for releasing. So it's a way that we release in our lives. So if there's things that aren't productive, feelings or thoughts that aren't productive for us, we're letting those go. Sometimes we'll have a dream where we can't find the toilet and we desperately need one. <laughs> or when you do find it, all the toilets are plugged up. <laughs> So that's where we need to release, but energetically we're congested. So our energy is sluggish, and so you know we need to practice techniques that we know to release, maybe go to an energy practitioner to help the energy get moving, but there's, there's usually a need to release, but for some reason we're holding on. We just can't let go of it. Water is going to represent our emotional life experiences. And so water, people associate with emotions. Now, the one exception to this, and we've worked with this quite a bit, but like food, 
is knowledge because we take it in. We also take in water. And it's a very essential aspect of keeping our body alive. So we refer to that as our emotional life experiences, but it can also um, represent our conscious, the, the experiences that we're consciously aware of during the day too. Because it's something we need to continue to take in those experiences to uh, be able to move forward. But most of the time, like if you're just on the water in a boat or you're swimming or something like that, it's going to be representing your emotional life experiences. All right, so I know that we're running close. So, all right. So, unfortunately, um, we ran just a little bit over there. Uh, so I was hoping to be able to get to uh, a couple of dreams here. But I am going to be available at the Ozark Mountain Table. And so uh, if you want to swing by there and uh, pick up a book or something like that, and we can talk about dreams, I'll also be available at our table where we can, um, if you have some dreams and you would like to go over those, um, I'll be available throughout the weekend too where we can um, talk about that. Also, uh, we have a workshop scheduled for Tuesday, and that's where we're planning to go into much more detail to give you really all the tools you feel so that you can feel comfortable really going home and being able to start your own dream interpretation study. You are doing a workshop so they can come with their dreams and discuss it there. Exactly, right. Yeah. And that's on Tuesday? Tuesday, yes. And I believe that's 9 to 5 or 10 to 5. Okay. But yeah, the, the desk has that. Uh, exact start time. So much information, yeah. it's pretty hard. <laughs> so if you write your dreams down, maybe you can get him, get him by himself and ask him. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you, Patrick Andrews. All right, thank you. <laughs>